Hey guys, this is 5AM here with a tutorial on making bubble sounds in Ableton Operator. So the first thing I'm going to do is drag out an instance of Operator onto this MIDI track and then I'm going to start with a sine wave on oscillator A. We don't actually need this filter. And I'm going to change the envelope so it's about the size of your average bubble sound. So I'm going to reduce the attack here. And I'm going to change the decay a little bit. I'm going to turn on the pitch envelope. And I'm going to take it, um, I'm going to take the uh, end of the attack, the beginning of the decay, all the way out to just a few milliseconds. And I'm going to drop the slope of that uh, initial attack so that it gives a little, like, kind of that kind of thing. I'm going to adjust the slope of the um, decay as well so it's not quite so extreme. You can play around in this area. It all sounds good, but I like something with a shorter decay like that and maybe like a different slope like I like I did. But you can really play around with these especially as you pitch it up and down because the behavior of the of the pitch envelope actually would change as you pitch it up and down. So there's going to be some fun things we can play with there. So I just pop the operator into a group. Um I'll explain why in a minute. Um or I might never explain why and you'll be sitting there like why did he do that? Um All right, so I've got a grain delay out here, and um, now I'm going to play this note into this grain delay. And we'll definitely play around with these parameters so you can really see what the grain delay does. This is just a fun way to start. You can play around with the pitch of that. The pitch just pitches it up, uh, pitches up whatever enters the grain delay by um, increasing seventh tones of the last played note, but it does it, you know, over the, um, over the course of time with the frequency and the spray being kind of parameters that can change that, as well as the time down here. That's like a long kind of delay with a lot of space in it. Or you could do something like a really short delay with, no, with very little space to create something that's a little bit more like of a reverb. And you can really do that if you, if you keep the pitch down at zero. You just get a, a nice kind of echo. You can really get it going for a while. You know, just some nice spaces. And then you can change octaves. So there's that. Um, and then you can get an arpeggiator on this. I'm just going to change this pitch now. I'm going to put it in a setting that I enjoy. Yeah. I'll keep it there for now, and I'll uh, change the arpeggiator rate to free, and uh, now you can hear the result of this. It just gets you some cool little um, repeats. So let me turn off that grain delay and show you what the arpeggiator is doing. It's uh, playing back that um, operator note uh, at intervals of milliseconds, and you can adjust the rate. I like to do something where maybe I'll, I'll look up that a C note is like 15.2 milliseconds. I think that's right. It could be 15.7. But anyway, you're, you're getting a, a note at these smaller rates. You can kind of get a cool timbre out of that note. I think 20.3 is a F. So that would be like a low bass note. You can do some fun stuff with that. Um, as a top end of a bass, like maybe I turn the filter on. You could do something like, you know, to really mess with people. <laughs> uh, yeah, turn that grain delay back on and let's, uh, let's record some automations. May play some different notes. Button mash. Maybe change the number of steps. You can uh, automate some of the parameters on this here grain delay to uh, change the resulting sound. I didn't really like that all playing on one, one note. Maybe I'll 
lock the envelopes, copy um, these, uh, this little passage here, paste that over there. So now I can, I can kind of use the notes that I enjoy, but with some of keeping some of the automations that I was doing, like on the rate here, that's kind of nice. I like to just kind of create my changes using the automation um, after I record some notes in. Um, keeping the MIDI, I, I tend to keep the MIDI for a while before I freeze it to audio, but we're going to play with all that stuff. Um, you know, I'm, right now I'm just going to like do some subtle changes to like the uh, frequency and the rate. And then when I freeze this all out, I'm going to have all that as like sample fodder, sample material to play with. Um, like right now what I'm, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm just kind of creating things that, uh, to listen to that I might not have thought to do, but are just kind of happy accidents. I spent a lot of time looking for happy accidents in um, production. Let's hear what we've just created. So yeah, I don't quite like, um, as I started to pitch the, uh, the synth up in steps, I think I want to keep it in one way for a while. And then I also thought that it, Oh yeah, the gate can be increased. I messed that up. You don't want the gate. The gate is um how long the sample plays before it reaches the release um phase of the envelope. So essentially it's like how staccato it is. Like if it's if it's like uh, or if it's uh or if it's uh, you know, it's like how long that note plays out for, which can also be affected by the rate as well. But the gate is kind of within the rate. You got a gate in the rate. That's kind of cool. Anyway, um, you know, I would spend a lot of time with this trying to get the best possible automations. Um, in this case, what I'm going to do is uh, a couple more. I'm going to do a couple more things. I'm just going to freeze this to audio, and I'm going to not flatten it. I'm going to create a track. That way I can keep that if I want to come back to it. I could also save that out, um, but I usually don't. I usually just go with the audio because like, now I know how to make this, and I, I probably have this somewhere as, a, as an instrument rack. So um, before we move on, let's actually do that. This would be a good time to put all of this into an instrument rack. This is why I had that operator in the instrument rack. Hey, it all came back. All right, save that out as bubble bath. Lately, I've been putting these into folders like 5AM effects, drippers. That's a little folder that um, you can pop bubble bath into. I have a bunch of other little effects racks that I've made. Um, but you can do things like, you know, map your, your rate to a macro, gate to a macro, uh, filter, uh, grain, delay, and then you have all of those necessary parameters right up front here. You know, you can just start playing away on that. Uh, I'm not going to do that because that takes a little bit of time, but you get the idea. So you can save that out, then you come down to your audio here, and I'm going to come down to my audio, and I'm going to listen to first to what I have. Yeah, so we got some cool stuff to work with. Um, I'm just going to start chopping and uh, messing around with these little, uh, these little bits of audio here. Like that little thing right there could be used. Um, you got this. Um, another thing I love to do, this is one of my favorites, is um, I'll go into my uh, warp. I'll turn, definitely warp that audio clip. I have, the, uh, I have it set to auto warp in the preferences. Um, warp modes are fun. So there's beats warp, which, which warps it based on beats. I'm not going to get into that right now. But texture warp is a really fun one. You can actually stretch the audio. So I'm going to stretch it here so that it's longer. Just grab a little transient and pull. And then I'm going to go into... Um, the grain size, and I'm just going to play around with that while I'm pressing play, or while the audio is playing. The flux changes the randomness with which the, the uh, little bits of audio are played back. Uh, texture is technically a granular synthesis within your clip, so grain size is what the size of the repeated grain of audio is, and flux is the, I think the randomness randomness or uh, jitter in the playback. So if I'm doing a short grain size, sometimes it's fun to turn the flux all the way down, which just loops that grain. So you get this really nice, smooth kind of... 
you know, that's really fun to play with. Um, you know, you can do things like risers with that, bass layers, um, if you get the pitch right. You know, you can you can figure that out using like a tuner. There's actually a Max for Live tuner device if you want to download that somewhere. It exists online somewhere. Uh, there's a cool thing. I like to reverse clips a lot. You know, that could be really nice for kind of fading into a uh, a beat drop here. Like imagine if like the beat dropped right there, you could do like, you know, <laughs> I don't know. I'm going to just maybe just kind of chop bits out and just isolate things that I like, you know, little drips and drops. And I might, um, something like that. You know, I'm being, I'm not being very precious with any of these sounds. If I don't hear something, sometimes I just say, eh, whatever. It takes too long sometimes to listen to every single little bit of audio that you've, um, that you bounced out. So just find some ones that you like, save them. And then, uh, you'll come back and you'll be like, wow, look at all these amazing sounds I made. And your mind won't be as discriminating as it is when you're listening to every single little bit of audio in this whole, uh, in this whole, um, bounce, because we don't need necessarily all of this we might just need like a little little drip drop here and there uh, you know if you, you could save out this whole sound effect you know but then you might not want to save out this one because maybe that already exists somewhere I mean if, if it's all gold too sometimes I'll just chop in random places if I know that it's all awesome I'll just name this one like bubble drops I'll name this one like bubble double drops you know and I'll create a little folder and then I'll consolidate that clip um, go to the consolidated folder, call that bubble, and then I'll drag that into In my bubbles. And uh, maybe for the purpose of filling up this folder, I'll make it a side folder here. I might take that down later, or I might not. Maybe it's going to be a fun one to have access to all the time. But uh, I'll just do, I'll just start uh, consolidating these clips, and I'll uh, start dragging them. You know, I'll obviously name them, and then I'll just drag into bubbles. And you just hover and drag, and now you're starting to fill up your bubbles folder with, you know, when you, when you go back when you're producing, you now have access to these sounds um, right at your fingertips, um, rather than having to go through a whole sound design session making that. So, you know, I'm, I'm probably um, going to finish up the tutorial here and just uh, tell you guys to have fun with this. Don't do everything that I talked about. Uh, really mess around. Um, put some, you know, try out some reverb on your bubbles. Um, you know, you start to create these amazing spaces when you put reverb on it, um, things like that. Um, that was actually what I wanted to end the tutorial with was uh, just kind of showing you guys how you can really have fun with creating these cavernous, um, un watery kind of uh, textures um, you can really have fun with and resample. So anyway. Uh, that's all for today. I'm probably going to go ahead and just start filing these all into a new folder because I'm really happy with how these came out. So uh, keep it glitchy, guys, and see you next time.